Now in this video we're going to look at the 555 timer wired in by stable mode. You can also call it a flip flop because it flips one way if you press one button and flops the other way if you press the other button I guess. But uh, in any case this is one of the three main modes that you learn. The last video we looked at was the Schmidt trigger where we built the circuit. That's just a circuit that I put together. It's not one of the three main modes. But uh, in any case we have a couple switches. If we press the sweat, uh, set switch, the output will be high. So if it was low, it'll flip high. If it was already high, it just stays high. And uh, as long as we're not pressing the reset, we'll get to that. And what that means is it tries to get to the positive supply as much as it can. We're going to use the NE555. And uh, most uh, 555s, like the NE555, they don't get all the way to the positive supply. It's about 3.5 volts, probably. And if you're using 5 volts, it falls about a volt and a half short. But in any case, you can see the current path there. The red LED lights up. If we press the reset pin, and the reset pin is the dominant pin. If you're holding that, the output is low, uh, no matter what else you do. So in any case, uh, if the output's high, we press the button, it goes low. If it's already low, it just stays low. But in any case, it's low. That means that it's connected to ground, basically. So we have a current path along this way. And so I have a blue LED that lights up when the output is low. So now let's talk about the buttons a little bit more. I already showed the buttons. I didn't talk about these resistors yet. But you notice that when you close the button, you get a direct connection to ground, which we consider zero volts. And uh, both of these pins are looking for close to uh, zero volts, below one third of the supply voltage for pin two. And I think it's half the supply voltage for four, but I'm not uh, completely sure. But in any case, they're looking for about zero volts. You get that when you close the switches. We also have these resistors up here. That's because the uh, pins for them, they kind of pick up stray signals in the air. And if uh, it's what's called floating, if nothing's making contact, it makes a wavering voltage. And so we can just take a high value resistor, 10 kilo ohm right there, and as long as the switch is open, that's a really strong connection to 5 volts. But if we close the switch, that's a direct connection to ground, that way overpowers it, brings it down to 0 volts. So in this setup, it's either uh, 5 volts or you close the switch and it is 0 volts. That goes for both these pins. They're just looking for a low input. A high input basically tells them not to do anything at all. Pin 6 over here, the threshold pin, is waiting for 2 thirds or higher of supply voltage. So we put that to ground. That's the lowest voltage point. It prevents it from doing anything. If it gets 2 thirds or higher and the output is uh, high it sets it low. Now the uh, LEDs we're just going to use 220 ohms for the red LED because uh, that works good for 5 volts and uh, the blue LED is a lot brighter than the red LED plus it's going to have more voltage across it but in any case we're going to use 1 kilo ohm for it if they're both red uh, 220 works just fine but uh, blue and green are brighter so you might as well go somewhat higher with resistance and use a 1 kilo ohm resistor and of course we have to power the integrated circuit, pin number 1 to the negative supply, pin number 8 to the positive supply. And so here's the NE555, pin 1 to the negative supply, pin number 8 to the positive, pin number 6 the threshold pin. We have to uh, the negative rail so it doesn't do anything. And uh, pin 2 we have running up to the bottom of a switch. Right there you can see the other side of the switch is to the negative supply. We're going to take a 10 kilo ohm resistor and put that to the positive uh, supply there so that we have 5 volts until we press the button then we will have 0 volts at that pin while we are holding down the button. Down here we have the uh, jumper from pin 4, the reset pin coming to the top of that switch. Again we're going to put a resistor to the positive supply. When we close the switch we will have a direct connection to the negative supply. The uh, green LED up here, the anode, is to the positive supply. Short lead the cathode down here. That's the longer lead up there if you have not trimmed them. And so we're going to put a 1 kilo ohm resistor from the uh, LED to the output, pin number 3, right there. And a 220 ohm resistor is going to go from the output to the long lead, the anode, of the red LED. And uh, the short lead, the cathode, is to that uh, gray jumper right over there. Now we are all done wiring up. So let's uh, pull back and you can see we have 
5 volts, but the output is off. I'll turn it on, and it looks like it favors the output being low to begin with. If I press that button though, the output goes high, and if I press that button, the reset button, the output goes low. So trigger, pin, set, and uh, reset pin resets it. So now let's look at the voltages that I talked about. These alligator clips are the end of the cable there. I clipped them to jumpers. We'll put the uh, black one to the negative power supply there. So the voltages we're looking at are in relationship to the negative rail. Now the uh, red one, let's uh, go here. It's pretty easy to see, even zoom back here. We're going to this point, which is the exact same point as if I go to the reset pin up here, because that's where the uh, jumper goes. And uh, so in any case, we can just measure it right there. And there you can see that we have five volts until I hit the button. Then we have zero volts. Now we'll go to the uh, reset pin. So I think you can see that right there. The jumper comes right there. And uh, I falsely triggered it. And uh, so there we go. My body gave it enough uh, voltage difference to uh, change it, it looks like. But uh, in any case, even with the 10 kilo ohm resistor pull, pull up resistor, I mean. So that's what it's doing. It's holding the voltage up until you press the button and then it goes down. And we flip uh, back here. So pretty straightforward. And we looked at this in the last video, but uh, we'll do it again. I'm going to come to the output where the two resistors connect together. And uh, you can see the red LED is lit, so it should be about three and a half volts. I was looking at where I was plugging the uh, wire. There it is to the output, just in case you couldn't see. And you can see it's about three and a half right there until I reset it. And now it is to ground to zero volts. So it doesn't go up to the supply voltage, falls about a volt and a half short. If you have the NE555 or any of the other uh, regular 555 timers that are out there. There's specialty 555 timers that do go rail to rail but uh, they can't handle as much current. I have the LMC555. I've done some videos on that one. But in any case, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of my other ones that I'm posting. Click like, subscribe, the bell. All that. Links are down in the description. I have a Patreon link down there too. Uh, donate if you can. That would help out a ton. I'll see you in the next video.